Kate, I'm back. Hello, everybody. It's Chaos. And I just come back from one of the most amazing events I've attended in my whole life. Well, maybe a part of Burning Man, but this one was pretty neat as well. So it takes a lot of we are to get me out of we are. And of course, this event delivered that. It were the We Are Days Europe in the wonderful capital of We Are Amsterdam. And well, I just can't stop talking about it. So I thought maybe this would be a good opportunity to launch my We Are Log. So I say, welcome to KS We Are Log, wonderful stories on We Are from we are and if i say from we are let me uh, show you around what's this wonderful place here this is my sandbox which is part of the high fidelity metaverse and using which i can show like all kinds of nice creations to friends from all around the world so high fidelity is philip brosdale's baby it's like the Follow up of Second Life, but in, yeah, you guessed it, in we are. And to me, there are many reasons why uh, high fidelity is going to be the future of social we are. So this is not only due to like the wonderful community, <coughs> love you guys, and the sheer endless creative possibilities so i can address the ipi via javascript and make all kinds of funky things happen writing scripts or i can bring in like fx's obj's even google blocks files directly from the app so i can do like crazy things here but uh, there are also some structural reasons uh, why i Pledge for high fidelity being the future, which is like for once it's open source. So all kinds of bright minded people can work together, making this code really perfect. And of course, uh, it's in the character of open source, uh, the code is going to stay. So even if the company high fidelity mutates into something else, somebody can pick up the code and keep this wonderful metaverse in existence. And one last, last not le least reason why I'm like so fond of this idea is there's still <coughs> high fidelity is peer to peer. So now you're asking me, why not have it run like on a centralized uh, server, uh, we could run it with an engine, we could have things running really stable and make everything look wonderful. Um, yeah, for now. But imagine being like a billion people in VR wanting to share their experiences and wanting maybe to be at uh, thousands together at one place. Um, I don't know if this huge amount of data which is needed to like make we are happen in our uh, view of our eyes uh, if this uh, if it comes from like billions of people can be hosted on like one single server farm controlled by one single company this is like the amount of data is too big and it's also easy to attack and uh, what happens if the company goes down so peer-to-peer -peer is also like a guarantee for for this metaverse staying in existence and I think maybe if in the far future one can translate it maybe high fidelity can become like the platform of platforms also hosting like all kinds of other platforms, but that's far in the future. So I'm going to stick to what I heard now. So I brought in some pictures. First, let me show you this wonderful place. This is the Delamar Theater, which is the wonderful location in which all the impressive keynotes of the first day took place. So let me go this out of the frame and 
see if we can fake some Amsterdam street here. Okay, and of course me being like a high fidelity beta tester fangirl, the presentation which impressed me most was Philip Rosedale's on how to use blockchain within VR. So let's see, I got another picture here too. Here you can see Philip Rosedale buying a watch within social VR. And what High Fidelity did in order to achieve this is they invented a new kind of blockchain. So let me get the picture out and I can show you stuff. So the new idea of High Fidelity is to do like the golden mean between uh, the decentralized cryptocurrency kind of blockchain we know already, which rather looks like this chaotic chaos star in the back. And um, a smaller, more applicable way of blockchain functions. So this means uh, they're gonna have like a smaller network of block signers which is gonna guarantee shorter confirmation times and no transaction fees. And this is really good if I wanna sell digital assets in world, because of course, if I uh, stand at the counter in a virtual shop, I don't wanna wait 10 minutes for my transaction to be confirmed. So I'd rather sneak out or copy the piece. And uh, what are we gonna store on this blockchain? This for once is it's going to be currency, the high fidelity coin, which we're going to run with like a stable monetary policy, which means an algorithm will get out more money the more users come into the application. And this again, for me, being an artist wanting to sell my toothbrush dresses in world, uh, comes really good because. Uh, uh, like Bitcoin might be nice for gambling and for earning lots of money if you dare to take the risk, but if I want to sell my tilt brush dresses for, let's say, $2 a piece, I won't make any money if the price for a cryptocurrency goes up from $1 per unit to whatever, $200 per unit within a couple of weeks. Nobody's going to pay that price for a digital asset anymore. So. It's not good for my business. That's why I'm really thankful for this idea of having like a blockchain currency, but with a stable monetary policy. Also, what's cool about it, it's that we're gonna have a digital asset registry, which is gonna work like a patent office. So you can register your scripts or your meshes or whatever creations you have there. And you're gonna have proof of creation stored in this high fidelity blockchain. And I really, really hope that something like this will become international standard in the future because at the moment it's such a hassle to clear the, the rights like globally if you want to organize an event in VR. And yeah, of course, where there's selling, there's also buying, so which is also going to be stored is the proof of purchase. And last, not least, in the high fidelity blockchain, there's gonna be stored identity. And as I'm the only owner of the anonymous keys to my transactions, I can choose if I wanna prove my identity in world. For example, if I have a meeting with uh, people from the other side of the planet who really wanna know, that I'm the real person behind that avatar, or I can choose to stay anonymous. And I'd really love to do that in real life sometimes. So let's have a look at what happened at the Pimax showcase. <laughs> 